Okay, so uh, today, my name is Jaron Osmar. And I am Chris Brown. We are Open Poll, or Flash Poll. Uh, and today, if you could pull out your cell phones, this is going to be an interactive presentation. Uh, it'll add a little bit to the fun for us all. Um, and uh, so the problem that we're addressing is the uh, gap in trust representation uh, between Congress, Congress, congressional offices, and the public. Uh, there's a, a strong feeling today that uh, the middle class or the, the man on the street is not being listened to, uh, and we hope to be able to address that problem. So um, right now, Congress is, is polling at something like 9%, uh, according to Gallup, which is an all-time low, a uh, very recent number. Uh, just to give you some perspective, uh, the number of people that are in favor of instituting communism inside the United States is at 11%. So that's a bigger slice of the population um, than approves of, of Congress as, as things currently stand. But one of the cruxes of the problem may be the way in which constituents interact with their congressional offices. So um, uh, please, con uh, people who work in the institution, don't answer this, but, but for the general public, how many of you have interacted with your congressional office in the last year, by a show of hands? All right, well, okay, we have a few. How many people in the room uh, receive text messages and, and send text messages? Okay, all right. So we've got so a, a bit of a disparity here. there. Now, the, the technology has always existed to, to send mass uh, texts to, to the public or to, to large numbers of people. Uh, that's been around for many years. What's new and what we are cornering is the ability to receive uh, responses to those mass text messages and then parse that data down. So uh, we can cut through the noise uh, generated by lobbyists and special interest groups, uh, people like this, um, that are clamoring for the attention of the, the congressional uh, lawmakers and uh, give them a better ear for the public uh, as a whole, cutting through that noise. So uh, uh, what one of the offices would do, they would come to this dashboard here, and they would just enter a quick question. Um, maybe, uh, how do you feel about uh, Patriot Act II? Uh, so what we want to do is, um, you know, the congressman's office always has, they have lobbyists, they have associations, they have industry organizations, whatever it is, coming in and they're saying, you know, we want to vote for these things. So you can see there's a number on your screen there. You can take your, uh, your cell phones, you can actually text that number, a Y or an N, um, and see how this, uh, this poll actually works. So um, as you do that, you know, I'll talk about one of, the, one of the things that we wanna do is, you know, we focus on SMS for this because everybody has it, but we could also plug this technology into uh, Twitter, we could plug it into uh, Facebook, and then all these services that we're looking at actually do provide locations so we can actually look and see is that constituent in the district that the office is, uh, is, is in. Uh, so that they can make sure that they're getting that the correct information from their constituents. Not only that, but uh, the congressional office can look at constituent uh, data individually. So they can look and say, John Smith is a hawk. Uh, Tim Jones is f fiscally conservative, etc. So as you can see, it's uh, you know there's a lot of opinions on that there. But let's uh, jump over to the report. And so uh, this would be something that the office would, uh, this is actually an older one we did, but um, this would be something the office would receive. I and mean, they would receive this via email. And the cool thing too is we can actually plug this into their existing communication system. So, um, you know, we can send out the question that way so, and back in. So in terms of openness, uh, the, the programming is, is public. In terms of feasibility, technology exists, we made it. In terms of accessibility, uh, Everyone who has a cell phone can do this. And in terms of impact, uh, this is a new, strong tool. It changes the quality of the debate. Thank you. So I think this is a great idea and something that would be enormously helpful to a number of offices. My question is, how do you get around the difficult house franking rules that essentially require that anything that's generated that isn't solicited by congressional offices has to be pre-approved? Well, there are two answers to that question. Um, you, can, you can run this software from inside your congressional office through your constituent relations program. 
um, and in which case you would be restricted by those sorts of rules. Uh, the other the other angle to that is that the campaign could run this this sort of program. It can be uh, argued that this is a marketing tool that does not uh, prohibit it, however, from informing congressional decision making. It's okay for your constituents to tell you how you should act uh, while they're on the cam while you're on the campaign trail, and for you to respond to that. Um, Ellis. I was going to go ahead and answer the question as well. We do know we did talk to several staffers, and we sort of got differing opinions on whether or not it would be okay to use. So, so we decided we'd build it anyway. Uh, and I do know that my congressman uh, Pete Sessions does have a text messaging system that uh, I've signed up for. I haven't received any yet, but he says he does. So. <laughs> Right, but it wouldn't be unsolicited, though, right? It would just be for people who had opted in. to the Right, and that's system. kind of the idea. And, and we actually have built into this technology a way for somebody to actually text in, like if the congressman wanted to pose that question, kind of like we did here in the room, and that somebody could text into that number their opinion. If, if the congressional office felt like they had a workaround, and, and I believe a lot of them do, I mean, they do mass texting that's not opt-in, um, then they would be free to do that. Now, maybe that's run through the campaign office. I'm not sure how that works, but it is existing uh, practice. Um, elegant interface. Two questions that are interrelated. The biggest concern for me is that you're going to reinforce these biases of people who don't actually know a lot about these things they're voting on. So is there any sort of way you could address that? And relatedly, not all of these things are yes, no, right? They're more complicated than a binary. So it's sort of this reinforcing with a limited information environment question. I mean, it would be easy enough to, to give a multiple choice. So, so it doesn't have to be binary. Um, we, we have an other category so that we can parse through the data looking at, at comments, for example. Um, it, it also leaves open the possibility of, um, of unsubscribing. I mean, the current technology allows people to unsubscribe by texting stop. Uh, as, as to your question about an uninformed public, uh, we're trying to address the uh, idea that uh, Congress is not representative of the public. So to ask us to not represent the public is, is, is you're, you're attacking the question you're asking us to solve. <laughs> Uh, to, to answer that with a technical answer, um, um, I think we could provide, we can provide links in these text messages. Uh, if we provide over other platforms, uh, we can, um, you know, we can provide additional information. One thing that we've uh, talked about kind of a, as a next step would be to uh, plug this data into uh, how the congressman actually vote on a particular bill. So if they pose a question about the Patriot Act and say, and then everybody says don't vote for it, but you know, then then we could say, well, they actually did. So Just to be clear, that would be at their discretion yeah, also. We're not going to be hijacking their, their system. Any last questions? All right, great. Thank you so much.